Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus lesson on table problems in maths. The worksheet for today's lesson is linked in the video description and as always I strongly recommend that you have a go at the questions before you watch the rest of this video. If you find it useful please like, subscribe and click the bell button and don't forget that my live lessons are every Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock in this YouTube channel. Right, let's get started. So, as we can see here, there's a forester who's conducting a survey of the trees in a wood. And she records the information about lots of trees, 150 of them, and she writes down whether they're evergreen, whether they're deciduous, whether their leaves are broad, or whether their leaves are in the form of needles. Because in fact, not every evergreen tree has needles. And we've got various bits of information here which will help us to find the answers to this question. So we can see that we've got various percentages and fractions and some numbers, and we also know this up here. And we've got a table to complete. Now, this may look very difficult because, for example, we have to find out the number of evergreen trees with broad leaves. Now, if we look up here, we can see that we know what proportion of trees are evergreen, and we know the number of trees with broad leaves, but nowhere are we told the number of evergreen trees with broad leaves. So what can we do with this information? Well, the first thing we have to do is just to start filling in what we do know in the table. For example, we know that 30 trees have broad leaves. Now, there's no box in the table for the number of trees overall with broad leaves, but we can just write on the right here that there are 30 trees with broad leaves, and then we'll tick this off because we've given that information. There's something else that we know that's very important, and this is that there are 150 trees in total. And that means that the number of broad leaf trees plus the number of trees with needles is going to add up to 150. We can get rid of this because it isn't zero. And if we know this, that means that there must be 120 trees with needles because 30 trees plus 120 trees gives us 150, which we know is the total. Now, does that help us in any way? Well, we also know that 70% of the trees with needles are evergreen. And we now know how many trees have needles. That's 120. If 70% of these 120 trees are evergreen, then all we need to do is find... How do we do that? Well, for more detail on this, look at my videos about percentages. There's a very simple method that I suggest, which is to do 120 times 0.7. Why is that? That's because 70% is 0.7 and of in maths always means times. So we can just do this very quickly. And as we can see, there's one digit after a decimal point in the question. And that means that in the answer, we count one place from the right in order to place our decimal point. So this gives us 84. 84 is, if we just check again, the number of trees with needles that are evergreen. Right, now this suddenly is very useful for us because we know that the total number of trees with needles is 120. So 84 plus something must give us 120. So that something must of course be 36 because 84 to 90 is 6 and 90 to 120 is 30. What else do we know? Well we know that 29 fiftieths of the trees are evergreen and we know that there are 150 trees in total. So what is 29 fiftieths of 150? Or to put it differently, 29 out of 50 is what out of 150? So to get from 50 to 150, we have multiplied by 3. So we have to do the same thing up here. What's 29 
times 3. Well, we know that 30 times 3 is going to give us 90, so this must give us 87. So this tells us that there are 87 evergreen trees in total. And now with this information, we can really get flying because if there are 87 evergreen trees and 84 of them have needles, that means that three of them must have broad leaves. And if there are 30 broadleaf trees in total and three of them are evergreen, then there must be, there must be 27 that are deciduous. And suddenly we have a completely filled in table. Now we could also have completed this entry here if we said that 87 plus something gives us 150, so that must of course be 63. And that's a really useful cross check because if we add together 27 and 36, 27 plus 6 is 33, plus 30 gives us 63. So that double check helps us to be confident that this value is correct. And that's the beautiful thing about these tables. You can check that your answer is right by adding up along a different axis and making sure that everything stacks up accurately. So there we have it. On to the next question. And as you can see, this is very similar, although a little bit more sinister because it's about foxes and wolves eating lambs or children. So what can we do here? Now, we know already from the last question that the total number can usefully go down here in this corner. So that means that the total number of preferences, lambs and children, must add up to 360, and that the total number of foxes and wolves must also add up to 360. So what can we do with this? Well, we can see here that 74 animals prefer children. So that goes in here. We can also see that 7 twelfths of the animals surveyed were foxes. Okay, so 7 twelfths is how many? 360ths. This is a lot easier than it looks. 12 times 3 is 36, so 12 times 30 must be 360. 7 times 30, well 7 times 3 is 21, so 7 times 30 must be 210. Of course, you could also work these out, and often it's a good idea to do the paper calculation just to be certain that your mental arithmetic isn't wonky. So you could, for example, do and solve that to work out that it's times 30. So we know that there are 210 foxes and if the total number of animals is 360 then that tells us that there must be 150 wolves. The last bit of information we're given is that 64% of the wolves preferred lambs. Can we finish these ones so we can tick them off? There are 150 wolves in total, so what's 64% of 150? 150 times 0.64 and so we've got 96. And so just checking what information that is again, 64% of the wolves preferred lambs, that means that 96 wolves prefer lambs. Okay, and that means that of course 54 wolves prefer children. We may as well complete this entry here. We know that there are 360 animals in total, so if 74 prefer children, 360 minus 74 is of course 286. You can also do a quick calculation there to be certain of that. And then we can uh, work this out quite straightforwardly. So if there are 74 who prefer children, 54 of those are wolves, then 20 of them must be foxes. And if there are 210 foxes of whom 20 prefer children, then there must be 190 who prefer lambs. And there we have it. That's our full set of answers. So once you have a good clear system for solving these, the answers come out really easily and you can tackle any question of this kind 
in an 11 plus exam. I hope that was useful. If it was, please like, subscribe and click the bell. And I hope to see you back in this channel at six o'clock on Tuesday evening for my next easy 11 plus live lesson. Goodbye.